What's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to install Debian 11 from start to finish. I'll be showing how to make a bootable Debian installer thumb drive within Ubuntu using Etcher. Ubuntu has a built-in bootable drive utility, but I wanted to show off Etcher today. You can also use Etcher in Windows, or you can use Rufus. I showed off Rufus in my How to Install Ubuntu video, which I'll have in a link or below in the description, should you want to use it instead. Both are certainly great utilities. The websites I'm also going to show will be in the description below as well. Anyhow, let's get started. So the first thing I just wanted to show off is that there is this website within Debian's page that shows the system requirements. The general overview, at least for a PC computer, is that you need essentially a Pentium 4 1 gigahertz processor or faster, 1 gigabyte of RAM, and at least basically 10 gigs of storage space. So nothing too, too extreme. As far as downloading Debian itself, if we go to Debian's website here, let's go ahead and click on the download section over here on the right. And then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we're actually going to go ahead and do the CD and USB ISO image. There is a network-based installer, which is a smaller file, but I recommend personally using the full-size ISO. And so we'll go ahead and click on Download CD DVD Image images using HTTP, and then we'll scroll down here. And then depending on what hardware you're installing this on, you can go ahead and select which version here. For modern computers that have Intel or AMD processors, then you're for the most part going to be using the AMD 64 version. AMD 64 is not specific just to AMD processors. If you have an ARM-based computer like a Raspberry Pi, then you would go ahead and use the ARM64. And if you have a really old computer that doesn't support 64-bit operating systems, then you would use the i386. There are other styles in here as well, but we're not going to go over those at all today. But anyhow, for my machine, I am using the AMD64, so we'll go ahead and click on this. And go ahead and scroll all the way down to the bottom here and hunt down the actual ISO file here. I've already downloaded it, but if you go ahead and click it, then obviously it would start downloading. And as you see here, it is 3.6 gigs in size. Now, before we do continue, I also recommend that you do have an 8 gig thumb drive. This could expand out to be larger than 4 gigs, and that's why I recommend an 8 gig thumb drive. And I will have thumb drives listed in the description below that I recommend. The other thing also is that as far as the USB variant of the thumb drive, I recommend at least a USB 3.0 drive. That is, of course, if the computer has USB 3.0 or newer slots on it. It's just going to speed things up, but you can certainly use a USB 2.0 drive as well. It is just going to be more on the slower side through all the processes of the installation. So anyhow, with the ISO downloaded, we're going to go to Etcher's website here, and we're just going to click on Download Etcher. And then obviously here you just go ahead and select the operating system that you have. Currently this is Ubuntu 64-bit, so I will just go ahead and download this guy right here. And it's less than 100 megs, so it's a pretty small file here. So let's go ahead and open it. All right, let's go ahead and double-click it. Now if you see this warning pop up here, go ahead and click OK. Go to Show Applications. You can either do a search for terminal or go ahead and hunt it down right here. And then let's go ahead and type in sudo add apt repository universe. Hit enter. Type in your password. Hit enter again. And then what we need to do is sudo apt install libfuse2. And I will have both of these commands down in the description below. Hit enter. And then we can go ahead and close out of this. And we'll right click, properties, permissions, allow executing. And then double click, and then now Etcher will pop up for you. 
Now Etcher is much easier to use in a Windows environment, but I wanted to just go ahead and show it here. So there were a few hoops that we had to jump through, but anyhow, let's go ahead and do flash from file. Here is the Debian image here. Click open, go ahead and do select target. And in this case, we'll go ahead and select this thumb drive here and we'll do select one and we will hit flash. And then go ahead and type in your password, hit enter, and then let it work its magic here. And then just go ahead and let it validate. All right, flash completed. So we can go ahead and close out of this. Obviously, if you have any data that you have on your machine, now is your last opportunity to go ahead and back it up before we start the next process. So obviously, we'll have to go ahead and get the computer to boot from the thumb drive. Now every make and model is always different. You know, it could be the F2 key, it could be the F9 key, F10, F12, delete key. If you're doing this on a Microsoft Surface, then you also have to do a button combination of shutting the Surface down, turning it back on, and when you turn it back on, you're holding the volume down key and the power button and still continue to hold the volume down button as it boots up and then it should start booting from the thumb drive. My best words of advice for this is to go ahead and just Google your make and model and figure out what is the boot key for your machine. Anyhow, I have a Lenovo, so it is F12. So I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this and then I'm just gonna keep spamming the F12 key until it boots into the thumb drive. And one thing to mention, you may also run as the boat of potentially needing to disable secure boot in order for it to pull in the files from the thumb drive. All right, so we're gonna go and tab down to the USB disk 111 here, and it may show up as USB thumb drive, it may show up as USB disk. We'll just go ahead and hit enter. And then we're gonna do the graphical install, we'll hit enter. It will also automatically select that if you don't hit anything and just wait a little bit. And this is your chance to select the language you'll be installing. In this case, I'm going to stick with English. We'll hit continue. Select your location. I'll keep it as United States and continue. Configure the keyboard. I'll keep mine as American English. Continue. If you get this non-free firmware file pop-up thing here, you can just go ahead and hit no for this. And we'll hit continue. For the most part, you should be okay to continue on without that. So at the host name selection screen, I'm going to go ahead and change this to coffee for the fantastic coffee cake recipe that I will have in the description field below. Anyhow, you can feel free to change it to whatever host name you like. We'll go ahead and click continue. Domain name, if the machine is part of a domain, then you would go ahead and type in the domain information here. We'll go ahead and click continue. And then go ahead and type in a password for your root user. Mine is not very secure, but that's okay for this video. We'll hit continue. And then we'll go ahead and name the user coffee. Continue. And coffee for the username, which of course you can always edit to something you want. Continue. And I'll go ahead and type in the password. And we'll continue. And then go ahead and select your time zone. In this case, I'll just leave mine as Eastern and we'll continue. And I'm going to go ahead and select guided use entire disk. You can go ahead and choose an alternative here, but this is my recommendation here. We'll hit continue. Here's the internal hard drive here. And here's the thumb drive. We'll go ahead and leave it on this here. We'll hit continue. We'll do all files in one partition and continue. And then we will do finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Hit continue. And then this is the final warning before it destroys all the data that's currently on the drive, wipes it clean, and starts the installation process. We'll hit yes and continue. And now we're going to go ahead and start installing all the data to the drive. So just be patient here. If you get the configure the package manager pop up here, I recommend hitting yes here so that it will go ahead and download software packages that may not be necessarily a part of the image that's on the USB thumb drive. So we'll hit yes and hit continue. And we'll keep United States, obviously select whatever 
country you are in. And then I'm going to leave the deb.debian.org. Hit continue. If you have a proxy, then you would enter the information here. I do not, so I'll hit continue. Let it work its magic some more here. At the configuring popularity contest, by default, it's saying not to send data back. We'll go ahead and keep it as no, but if you do want to send them usage survey information, you can certainly select yes. We'll hit continue. At this screen, you can go ahead and either select or deselect things that are listed here. One thing to note is that none of this stuff is permanent. If you end up not choosing SSH server or web server at this point, you can always add it in after the fact. So I'm going to leave everything as is here and we'll hit continue. Just be patient as it continues to crunch. All right, at the finish the installation screen, what I usually do is as soon as I hit continue, I pull the thumb drive. So we'll hit continue. And then it should start booting for us. And you can either hit enter here or just let it automatically do its countdown of four or five seconds and just let it work its magic. And we're at the login screen, so I'll just go ahead and click coffee, type in the password. All right, and we're in. So a few things you can do right off the bat is if you right click the desktop background here, you can go ahead and change the background if you want to. There's a few options here, or you can go ahead and do add picture. We'll change to this fancy one while we're here. While we're in here also, we can go to displays. And if for some reason it didn't automatically detect the right resolution of your monitor, you can go ahead and change the resolution here. In this case, because I'm using a Pi KVM, it can't fully detect what it's capable of. So I want to go ahead and change this here and we'll just hit apply. So obviously there's a whole bunch of settings and whatnot in here. And so a big one is you can go to date and time. If you don't want the 24 hour time here, then you just change this to AM and PM. And now you've got that set. You can also go to about. And this gives you the general information of your machine. And if you scroll all the way down, then there's also the software update section that you can click on. Everything here is already up to date, so we can close out of that. And we can close out of this. And so if you're a Windows user and you haven't used Debian before, the top left corner under Activities is essentially your start menu for applications. So you've got Firefox as your default browser. You've got Evolution, which can be used for your email, Rhythmbox, music player stuff. LibreOffice are going to be your office applications, like the Word equivalent of LibreOffice. Your files, aka basically your Windows Explorer here. There's a software store that you can click on. Go shopping. And obviously you can search for things, see what's installed, see if there's updates, kind of essentially what we saw in the About section for software. Go ahead and click close out of that. And we'll go back here. There's a help section. And then there's show applications, which shows all applications. And you also do have a search bar up here. There are multiple pages by default of applications. If you take a look on your right here, there's these dots. So we can click on each one of these dots and see that there's more and more applications here by default. What we're going to do is go ahead and click on software and updates. You can leave this as is. Let's go to updates. What I strongly recommend you do is for the automatically check for updates, change this to daily. And then go ahead and type in your password, hit enter. As far as this portion goes here where it says when there are security updates, you have a few options here. Display immediately, download automatically, or download and install automatically. Now I recommend download and install automatically so that you stay up to date with your updates. Unfortunately, as much as people may mention it, no operating system environment is safe from viruses and malware and ransomware and all that good stuff. So I strongly recommend you keep it up to date. We can leave everything else as is here, but we'll go ahead and click close. And one thing I do like to do just to make sure that this is actually up to date. is I want to show you the manual method of doing updates. So we go to activities, type in terminal. Now let's go ahead and type in sudo apt get update. And we'll go ahead and type in the password. In this case, it says 
coffee is not part of the sudo errors file. So let's go ahead and type in su, hit enter, type in the password for the root account, hit enter, and now we're on root. So now let's try sudo apt get update again and hit enter. And then let's go ahead and type in sudo apt get upgrade and hit enter. In this case, there are no more updates, so that's fine. And then we'll just go ahead and close this. And we can close terminal. In the top right corner will be your power options, also your volume, screen brightness, network information. In this case, I'm just on a wired connection here, but if it was wireless, then you would also have that option up here. You can get into settings here, which brings us right back to the settings that we were in before. And then you have your lock option where you can lock the workstation and then your power options of suspending it, restarting, power off, and log out. So anyhow, that's the general run through of how to install Debian 11 from start to finish. Everything should be good to go at this point. Feel free to customize things however you like. When in doubt, if you've got questions, just Google it. There are many great communities out there that help support Debian environments. So please like the video if you found it to be helpful and subscribe to my channel. I plan to show a whole bunch of different Linux-based projects using Debian in the, in the near future, so keep an eye out for them. And if you haven't already checked out my channel, take a look at the content that's already available. And as I would mentioned, the content is just going to keep growing, so keep an eye on things. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.